Today I'll be demonstrating time correlated single photon counting or TCSPC using the floor log by Joben Vaughn. So the first thing you'd like to know is the peak excitation and emission of the, the organic dye you'll be, you'll be um, looking at today. We'll be using Alexa 488 and duplex DNA. So I need to make sure that my point source is uh, the proper wavelength. And you can see here this is 390 so this won't work. You need to change out your point source. We have several point sources here that to choose from. I need 459. So to remove the nano LED that's already on the instrument, you loosen the set screw and pull out the plug. And you can take the next one. Which if you look right here is 459. Place it in the instrument. Tighten on the set screw. And put the plug in here. There's a little ridge on the on the plug that needs to line up with the little divot inside here. If you plug it in and you don't get light, this is why. All right. So now we have the laser hooked up. Now we can turn everything on and start counting some photons. So now that we have our laser installed and the instrument started up, we can open the data station and the instrument will begin initialization. So to begin we want to pick the FL3-21 configuration with emission 1. Now the two most important parts of this are we need to turn it to the TBX04 detector which is here and we also want to use the nano LED sample chamber which is here so we need to click on this as well and then the instrument will initialize. Alright so we want to do lifetimes so we'll click on lifetime here open it up so the first thing we want to make sure we have is we want to have our emission monochromator at the wavelength we want to record the emission for whatever floor four you're going to be using. Since we're using 488, we want to record its peak emission, which is 517. I've already set the emission monochromator to 517. We're going to turn on our nano LED, and then we're going to make two measurements. The first measurement is going to be the prompt which is the instrument response function. And to do that, we will use a light scattering colloid, in this case, colloidal silica or colloidal starch called Ludox. And we'll be using a typical micro cuvette to do so. These cuvettes are kind of particular about the orientation you need for this instrument in that there are three windows to view from. The, the, the side that you cannot read through needs to go to this side of the detector because there's nothing here. Then. The two windows that you can see through need to go in parallel to the beam of the laser, and the one window here goes to the detector. Once we place our solution in the instrument, we want to make sure we're not collecting too many photons. We want to stay within about 0.5 to 2% um, photon collecting, which you see in the lower right-hand corner of the screen here. We're at 0.34% now. We want to get that a little bit higher. So we're going to open up our slit widths. I'm going to open it all the way open to 20 nanometers. And you can see we're now collecting 1.1%. Once we go over 2%, this green icon will turn red. And then you'll know you'll have to close your slit widths. But we're good right now. So now that we know we're collecting a minimum, the, ma the, the, the maximum amount of photons, we're going to click on prompt and we're going to click start. And the instrument will start counting photons. One thing you'd like to do just for um, kind of personal preference is to view the data um, going from left to right which I can switch after it's done recording. 
So we've already set we've already set the peak to 10,000 counts for the highest bin. So once it hits 10,000 counts in the highest bin it has, it stops. That's all it needs to do. So then we're going to switch our data so it looks normal. All right. And now we can actually begin our measurements. Now we've measured the instrument response function. I can put in my Alexa 488 die and we can measure the lifetime of 488. All right, so I've placed in here a 100 nanomolar duplex DNA labeled as Alexa 48 dye. Um, typical concentrations you'll use in this instrument are around the nanomolar range. The same, the same concentrations you'd use in your normal fluorescence experiments using a fluorimeter. So I'll place my sample back in, in the same orientation with the two windows that are, are parallel to one another pointing this way and the one window that's only open pointing this way. All right, now that I have my sample in, I have to make sure that I'm counting enough photons. And as you can see on the lower right-hand side of the screen, that green icon turned red. It's telling me that there are too many photons being detected right now. So I need to close my slit width. I'm going to cut it in half. Right, so now we've dropped down to 1.68. Just to be safe, I want to go right around 1%. Nice happy medium. All right, so we got 1.15% detection. Perfect. So now we'll click on decay. And now we can record the actual lifetime of Alexa 48. Once again, when the highest count of the bins reaches 10,000, the experiment will stop and we can fit our data. Another interesting thing you can do while you're watching this is switch from um, log to linear scale. So the log scale, this kind of looks like a straight line, whereas a linear scale, you can actually see the decay profile. All right, we have finished data acquisition and have now measured the lifetime of Alexa 488. So now we want to save our decay. To do so, we click File, we click Save. And I'll save it in my folder here on the desktop. So it automatically saved both the prompt and the decay in that file. If you do, if you want more than one experiment using the same prompt, you can actually go and do a new decay. But for each decay you save, you'll have to save the prompt again. So we can actually do another measurement just to show you, just to demonstrate. And we're done. So as I said before, to save this one, we're going to go to File and Save. So here, now that we have two decays for one prompt, it's going to ask you which prompt you want to save it to which decay. We only have one prompt, so we only can choose that one. But we want to choose the second decay to save it. All right, and so that concludes the measurements of 488 lifetime. Now that we've acquired our lifetimes, we want to fit each decay profile with the exponential equation. We do this using the decay analysis software. So we go to open our file in our folder. You'll see you have your prompt in blue and your decay in red. You want to constrain the data you fit, actually, by, by moving these right and left-hand lines to about where your data is contained within the file. Now, it's simply, you just click on this fit function here, and you can click one exponential. You ask the, in, the software to recommend which channel is the uh, lifetime is in. Click fit. 
you can see that our time one is on channel 71 about four nanoseconds which is right in the right range for Alexa 488 and our chi squared is 1.11 it's a little high so we'd like to see if a single exponent if a double exponential would fit better again we go back to the fit function click two exponentials again recommend and fit it again and you can do this again and again up to five lifetimes before the instrument tells you you can't fit anymore and you can see with each one of your fit it lists your chi squared value for each fit so they're all still about 1.1 and that's it to save your actual lifetimes you would basically highlight this folder here copy it and paste it in a notebook into notepad sorry and there you go there's your lifetimes